camera. So my name is Claudian Choco, as or as they know me here, Coco. Uh, so I was a former postdoc at the Jacques Love Center for the History and Philosophy of the Life Sciences. And with Sophie, we've been organizing, trying to organize this uh, this uh, workshop on replication for the last two years. Uh, and I want to thank the participants for um, you know enduring us and our emails. And I want to thank you, the, the, the participants here, for taking their time to come here today, and also the people on uh, Zoom. Um, so the first, uh, the first speaker, Professor Gerd Gigerenzer from the Max Planck Institute for Human Development in, uh, in, in Berlin, he couldn't make it today uh, because he fell ill with COVID the very last, uh, the very last day. Uh, however, we decided uh, uh, to provide a summary of his main argument uh, regarding uh, the problem of irreproducibility. So, Professor Gigerens has, has been working on this issue of, um, of the problem of, of, of the main method that scientists use in order to test their hypothesis, uh, namely null hypothesis uh, significant testing. And he has pointed out the problems with this, this specific epistemic method already from the early 90s. Um, uh, so, of course, it is not possible to, you know, give all the summary of his arguments. Um, I will just read um, his argument as it was sent to us by him. Uh, of course, we have the full paper. If anyone is interested, we can, we can share it with you. So, everyone on Zoom can see the screen, right? Okay. So the basic idea is uh, that Professor Gigerens uh, gives is that this uh, statistical testing in science has become uh, a ritual, something which is done mechanically, mindlessly, without providing any understanding of what we are doing or the significance of the result. And for him, this is the main reason behind the, the current uh, reproducibility crisis. Scientists are only interested in rejecting the null hypothesis, getting sat statistically significant results. And they can use different ways to do that uh, without this providing any understanding of what, what it means for the result. Okay, so I read from his argument. The argument. I have argued that the replication crisis in psychology and the biomedical sciences is not only a matter of wrong incentives that are gained by researchers, the strategic game hypothesis, but also a consequence of researchers' belief in their null ritual and its associated delusions, the statistical ritual hypothesis. In the first section of this article, I reconstructed the creation of the null ritual by textbook writers who merged two competing statistical theories into one hybrid theory whose core is the null ritual and whose desired product is statistical significance. This ritual eventually replaced good standards of scientific practice with a single convenient, convenient surrogate, the p-value. <laughs> In the second section, I tested four predictions of the statistical ritual hypothesis. The first of these is that a substantial proportion of academic researchers should share the replication delusion. A review of the available studies with 839 academic psychologists and 991 psychology students showed that 20% of the faculty teaching statistics in psychology, 39% of the professors and lecturers, and 66% of the students did so. The second and third predictions are that a substantial proportion of researchers should share the illusion of certainty and Bayesian wishful thinking, respectively. In the studies I reviewed, between 56% 
and 80% of statistics and methodology instructors in psychology departments believed in one or more of these three delusions. This range increased to 74% to 97% for professors and lecturers who were not methodology specialists. To see through these delusions does not require understanding of high-level statistics. In other contexts, researchers themselves study whether their participants are subject to the illusion of certainty or the inverse probability error. The fourth prediction of the statistical ritual hypothesis is that researchers should be largely blind to statistical power because it is not part of the ritual. The available meta-analysis in psychology show that the median power to detect a medium-sized effect is around 50% or below, which amounts to the power of tossing a coin. There has been no noticeable improvement since the first power analysis uh, in the 1960s. The statistical ritual hypothesis also explains why an estimated 94% of academic psychologists engage in questionable research practices to obtain significant results. Significance, that is, rejection of the null hypothesis, is the primary goal of the null ritual, relegating good scientific practice to a secondary role. Researchers do not engage in questionable practices to minimize measurement error or to derive precise predictions from competitive theories. They engage in these practices solely in order to achieve statistical significance. And I think this is the end of the presentation. So uh, I suggest to read the entire paper. It's a fascinating paper. Uh, we can make it available via our uh, email list. So I'm very saddened that Professor Giger has couldn't make it today. So now we have, I think we have like 15 minutes until the next speaker. Oh, maybe it's already here. Let's see. Stop sharing.